Good morning, everybody. <laughs> um, thanks for coming. I really appreciate being here so early. I know <laughs> it's hard. Oh, <laughs> I didn't really <laughs> notice. Okay, <laughs> I was speaking too loud. Okay, so again, um, good morning, everyone. Um, what I would like to talk about today is, as Jürgen said, something which is really crucial to our work. And I hope um, you can take something away from it. And I hope we can uh, here create something of a space where, where we can exchange ideas and exchange some learnings. It's about how we approach things and how are we towards our clients behaving in terms of are we really interested in what our clients do and what their customers are and what the business of um, our clients is. Are we really interested or are we just having some professional empathy and saying like, okay, he's doing that and that and that. Or are we really, really interested? Okay, put that aside. Um, I have to share one really um, important thing with you. It's actually um, um, a hard truth and I'm sorry for that. Um, but I hope you can take it Winter is coming. And you can somehow feel it. I mean, this week we had some good weather in Berlin, but still you can feel it, winter is coming. And I want you guys to be prepared for that. So I brought you a story, and I thought it would be great if you guys just close your eyes. I know it's early in the morning, so it won't be that hard. <laughs> just close your eyes and trust me. Okay, imagine there is a group of mice on the field. They walk around like um, a mouse would do, and they collect food for the winter. So they run around, collect berries and supplies and all of that, and um, hide them in a stone wall for the winter. And then the story begins. The winter days came, and when the first snow fell, the five little field mice took to their hideout in the stones. In the beginning, there was lots to eat, and the mice told stories of foolish foxes and silly cats. They were a happy family. But little by little, they had nibbled up the most of the nuts and berries. The straw has gone. The corn was only memory. It was cold in the wall, and no one felt like chatting. Then they remembered what Frederick, one of the mouse, had said about the sun rays and about colors and about words. What about your supplies, Frederick? You haven't collected any berries, they asked. Close your eyes, said Frederick, as he climbed on a big stone. Now I send you the rays of the sun. Do you feel how they golden glow? And as Frederick spoke of the sun, the four little mice began to feel warmer. Was it Frederick's voice? Was it magic? And how about the colors, Frederick, they asked anxiously. Close your eyes again, Frederick said. And when he told them of the blue periwinkles and the red poppies and the yellow wheat and the green leaves of the berry bush, they saw the colors as clearly as if they had been painted in their minds. Amen. Okay, here the story ends. You can wake up. And this is how it looks. It's actually a children's book from the 60s um, by Leon Leoni. And it was um, one of the first books I ever experienced as a kid. And it made a big impression on me. Actually, I come from a family where color is quite important. So if my mother would uh, set up the breakfast, she would say, like, oh, there's some red needed. And she would take some marmalade or some. So she would really eat in colors, which is awesome. But what's really important in here is 
if we are um, asked to work for a client or asked to work for a project, we really have to go deeper than just asking, okay, what are you doing, and then doing some research and never leaving the desk. We, ha we really have to go in what they do and what the product they uh, ship is about and what the customers think of it and how they use it. Last year, we were asked um, to uh, develop a new product with an identity um, and um, a brand, um, which brings it substantial to the market. We even defined the audience for a startup in Berlin. And um, the one and only question we had in the beginning was, why and how do people read? And that was the single most important question we could ask. It was not about, okay, um, how our competitors look like, of course we come to that. And um, uh, of course we can talk about uh, clutter-free reading experiences, we can talk about typefaces and all of that. But the single most important thing to me was that we really go deep and understand how people read, why they read, and all of that. So we, we began with uh, defining the audience, we set up um, qualitative interviews, um, and really got deep knowledge of how people read, what are the patterns, um, especially in the market um, which that was in the US. And what was interesting was um, that we got some, some funny, uh, uh, some funny um, quotes from our readers, uh, like one was, um, one of the interviews we, we asked um, was really passionate into reading and actually um, she read more than 100 books a year, that's uh, two books a week I guess, um, that is quite substantial, but the average uh, reads about six books um, a year, then there are some, some medium readers with uh, 12 and of course some, some more advanced readers with 24. But um, all of them came to the conclusion that uh, reading is an escape from the daily mundane. And that was one of the key insights out of that. Um, of course, we, uh, we were um, researching also about um, what the differences are between the, um, each and every segment. We had uh, qualitative interviews in different regions. Of, all, of course, this differentiates also the lifetime in which you are and all of that. But the key to me was really, it's an escape. And um, if you imagine, you live here in Berlin, you go to work, um, you go to, um, uh, you travel with the subway, of course you have to commute or um, uh, go to the office, uh, you go partying, but uh, this is your daily mundane. And then if you think about reading, maybe on the subway or wherever it is, you enter a totally different world. The world, the land of great stories. And everything can happen there. There can be unicorns, there can be, um, of course, Dracula and all of that. And everybody from us um, at some point needs this little escape to just dive into something which is totally different from what we do in our everyday life. And so we started out um, to develop something which is exactly at that point where you can see the arrows a vehicle or a, a way to transport you to that land of great stories and to bring you back because sometimes you never want to get lost for too long. You might miss your subway or what. Um, so the core of the um, brand we defined there was um, the new brand is my smart escape to the great stories to all the great stars. It's smart because it's a good way to, um, to do that. Um, it's, it also saves you a lot of money because it's an ebook subscription service, um, but uh, it is actually my escape to that land. And so, where do you, um, how do you get there? You need the right vehicle to go there. And of course we looked at the competitors at that point then, and um, uh, some of the competitors you know, uh, one is called after a big river, uh, which is Amazon. <laughs> one is, um, of, uh, especially that um, uh, service is called Oyster, so it has a lot with the ocean. Um, so the only thing we could um, uh, go to was the sky. So we took the sky. And we uh, researched some ideas how we could do that um, and came up with some sketches of course um, how could this vehicle be which brings you to that uh, land of great stories but that was not enough we had to really to go deep into the um, history of flight so we uh, noticed that there are some awesome vehicles there 
um, which are really um, uh, beautiful. Uh, for example, things like that. I think this can bring you to a great land of stories. Um, some of them are even more beautiful, I think in shape, and some are <laughs> a bit more odd. Yeah. But all of them bring you to that. And so we thought, okay, let's do something of a magical vehicle. And I'm glad Christoph is here because he drew that. Um, those were the vehicles we came up with. <laughs> and I think they can bring you to great lands of stories, right? They can really transport you. And the good thing about them is they can also bring you back. Uh, you never get lost. So um, the identity we um, developed uh, around that was um, having a logo like this. Um, we actually developed also the name for it, it's Bloon. And um, this is the uh, brand mark. Of course, we developed that into um, an extensive um, language of graphic elements. And um, we helped them then to define the product, um, how the product will look like. Um, it's an iPad app um, and yeah. It's currently um, launched in the UK, so as a UK user you could use it or you could just ask for a private beta. And um, the good thing was there that we really gained something which is more than just um, doing a job for a client. It was really about reading. When we first started um, about thinking about the metaphor and how we come there, we sat together and um, I was reading something of a book um, which I was reading at that time and that really gave us something which we could dive into. And this is then how the um, website looks like. We um, developed this idea that, that um, stories can be shared through uh, strong quotes which might be connected or bring you to um, a story of its own. And you can see all the um, important parts about it, how you can discover books, um, how you can um, read for free, a clutter-free reading experience, of course, and um, how you can earn points to, uh, to read more about that. And of course, since this is uh, the talk about colors, we had to define some colors. Uh, I'm really grateful that this uh, projector is not uh, showing uh, the right uh, <laughs> representation of the colors we defined. But that's uh, okay, we can share it later. Um, for us, when we develop colors, it's also super important to name them, to give them something of a, of a name which is um, unique to that project. So the color purple, which is um, of course after the, um, the great novel, or the scarlet letter red, the one ring gold, very important color, uh, the mild green, the devil in a dress blue, the blue lagoon blue, and of course, 50 shades of gray. But 50 shades of gray is not enough. You also need uh, 90 shades of gray. <laughs> and you also need 15 shades of gray. <laughs> and uh, this helps the client to remember uh, the colors and um, how they can be applied and uh, how you use them in the system. And this is actually also um, true to another project we worked for, which is a travel startup here in Berlin, Get Your Guide, you may have heard of them, um, uh, quite successful. Um, and uh, actually in the beginning was quite interesting to work for a startup because they were smaller than our agency when we started and they were uh, triple the big uh, now as our agency, so that's quite impressive. And there we had the sunset orange, we had the Chianti red. Actually we had an Irish man working on it, so we had to have the island green. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, the ocean blue, the sky blue, morning grew elephant, black, and the highway black, very important. And actually they took it even uh, further. They, um, sorry, they added another color, which is called taxi yellow. So um, they even took that further. And of course, sometimes colors are not enough. And then we have to think about um, how we can uh, bring that even further. So at this point, um, the, they needed a travel companion. Uh, which is this uh, accent here. And this was actually intensive research on how the dog really lifts his nose and how his um, uh, foot um, are positioned. That was quite a substantial amount of research going into that. Yeah. And also some serious notes over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't bother you with the uh, responsive sausage dog. Okay. Um, <laughs> the last. Um, 
project also uh, where we um, defined an, a substantial amount of color um, was um, a magazine. Um, the German uh, natives of you all know it. Um, we developed the identity, uh, the, the relaunch of um, Zeit Magazine Online. And uh, we sat down with the ed editorial team to think about how can we spice up the magazine because it's actually the emotional side of um, the Zeit. And we came up uh, with the idea of, of having a uh, color palette changing each month. So the editors would be able to change uh, the colors um, uh, depending on the month for the cards. Um, and uh, we gave them um, also very serious names like Feurig in Verona or Liebe in Leipzig. Um, sorry, I can't translate them. Or uh, Sun in Serbia. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, built in the CMS, uh, they can have a, uh, they have a color picker, and actually they they work with it, which is also great. Um, you can see um, how that comes to life. So. We can, of course, uh, continue to talk about projects and projects and projects, but the <coughs> single um, most important thing to me this morning is really. Um, you really need to be interested in your clients and their customers. It's not about just doing some desk research. It's not about um, uh, uh, creating some, uh, um, some personas, but it's really going a bit deeper. Of course, you can start with, uh, with the friends you know and ask them, but you have to go deeper. And then the most important thing is to continue on that. Don't limit um, the, uh, the true um, interest for your client only to the research phase, but bring it uh, through the whole process you work with them. And be really curious about the, what they do and how they do things, because actually you can make um, different decisions on that, and especially be really interested in their customers, about how they interact, um, how they work with it, and build in a feedback loop to then tweak uh, the work you do. So I want to close up with a quote, which um, is currently uh, a top um, quote in my quote list. I have a collection of quotes which bring me um, through the day. And this is by Taija um, Chiregoran. I'm sorry, I'm not able to pronounce that name. But he says, if you're curious, you hold the keys. And that is so important to not forget. Thanks.